Hello, <laughs> it's Paul. Here I am, and we'll have another question today, and let's see what it might be. Brett in Austin, Texas, a place that I would like to go to. I've been to Houston, I've been to Dallas, and eh, I, but Austin's supposed to be cool. So I want to, I want to like Texas and Austin seems to be the place to go. So it's on my, it's on my list. I'm going to go to Austin. Paul, my question is, when should tubes be replaced in a circuit? Or no, I'm sorry. When should tubes be placed in a circuit? Sorry, very different meaning. In the front end or the output stage or simply a tube buffer that's added between the preamp and the power amp. I'm currently using the latter with good results. Thanks, Brett. Wow, that's an age-old question, Brett. There have been a number of companies that have made tube buffers, and let me explain what that is. If you want a tube sound, well, you have to use tubes. So obviously the simplest way is to get a tube preamp get a DAC with a tube output stage, buy a tube power amp, any number of ways to install a tube. But let's imagine that instead you have a complete solid state system. You have a solid state DAC and a solid state power amp or DAC preamp or phono stage, whatever you have, but it's all solid state. And you want that added warmth and musicality that tubes provide. Well, a few companies make a tube buffer. And the tube buffer is just a, a pair of tubes, one for the left and one for the right, that's typically inserted before the power amplifier. And so the signal runs through an extra stage and gets that tube sound. So that's what a tube buffer is. And your question is one that's kind of interesting because I have been running PS Audio, well, once off, but essentially on for 45 years. And until recently, we have always been solid state. And there are a number of reasons for it. Tubes have a number of problems. They are microphonic. They have to be replaced. You can't rely on tubes to have a consistent sound quality. They all kind of vary. They are becoming rarer. Most of the tubes today are made in Russia or China and not many other places. So those are the negative aspects of tubes. With solid state, we can have reliability, we can have consistency, etc., etc. You don't need to replace a transistor after using it for 20 years. That said, we, we now have added tubes to our BHK line of products. The amplifier, there's a... 250 stereo and a 300 mono series and a preamplifier. This took place because of a shootout that Bascom King, Arnie Nudell, and myself had at the very beginning of our project. And I'll tell you about that. So when we approached Bascom King and told him, look, Bascom, you're one of the best designers in the world. You've made products for Constellation Audio, Conrad Johnson. Oh, the list is, is well, he's been doing this for 50 years. So over all this time, he has helped and designed many, many products for many, many companies. But no Bascom King signature products have ever been made. And we wanted to have a world beater. We decided that we, as a company, wanted to have an amp and a preamp combination that we could stack up against any other product at any other price, whether it's $200,000 or 50 bucks, whatever. No compromises. Here was an amplifier that Bascom King could pour his heart and all his design energies into. And when I approached Bascom about that, he said, I'd love to do that. I, I can take everything I've learned over these years, build a product for PS Audio, but I have one requirement. And I said, what's that? He said, it's going to have tubes in the front end because if I'm going to put my name on it, then it has to be something that I believe in. 
And I just thought, oh, God, here we go. Tubes. Now, I have always loved tubes. One of the first products I ever owned was an Audio Research SP3 preamplifier, and I loved it. It was a, a very musical preamplifier. But as a company, we, as I described, have basically not used tubes. So I told Bascom, here's the deal. I will agree to it if that turns out to be the best way to go. And by that, I mean that we will have a shootout. You'll design your amplifier and we will make our best front end that we believe, which will be a solid state MOSFET design using high voltage, just like the tube, and Bob Stadther and I, Bob Stadther is our chief engineer, we're going to design our hearts out into this MOSFET design. And to make it easy, we're going to actually build this MOSFET design on a tube socket, male tube socket, in order to be able to plug in Bascom's tube design, take it out, plug in Bob and my MOSFET design and see how that sounded. And we would do a blind shootout. And Arnie and Bascom, myself and Bob would all be there. We're going to have somebody else put it in. Here's A, here's B. And we don't know which one's A and we don't know which one's B. And whatever the winner will be is the one that we will go with as a product. Well, the answer is kind of obvious because there was no contest. And that's why we have tubes in the front end of all the BHK series products. They are just so much better as a front end in a price no object analog preamplifier or power amplifier that there was just simply no contest. So to answer your question, the best place to put it is in the front end. Tubes in the output stage have their problems, usually require a transformer, and not the best way to go. Hope that answers your question. Thanks for asking. Bye-bye.